Dr. Mindy here, and it's Fast Training Week, and we're doing something really new. We're doing Fast Like a Girl, Fast Training Week, in celebration of my book that's coming out. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you're gonna find everything you need to know about fasting here. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, you're gonna see in other videos, I am on a mission to help the world discover fasting, especially women, because we have to fast differently. And on this video, I'm gonna show you why and I'm gonna show you how. Do a long fast one day, your blood sugar going up and down. We're in it together. Okay, it's Fast Training Week, and we are doing Fast Like a Girl Fast Training Week. So let me start off by saying, if you haven't ordered the book, it is ready for pre-order. You can go to fastlikeagirl.com and find out all the places you can pre-order it. Second thing, Element, our favorite mineral pack to take, put in your water when you're fasting, is the sponsor of our Fast Training Week. If you want to win a free box of these delicious minerals, grapefruit, by the way, is my favorite, then all you've got to do is put companion guide in the comments. My team will send you a link for the companion guide, and in there you can learn how to win a free box of Element. So here's something interesting to think about. A lot of women don't lose weight, not because they didn't try hard enough, it's because they didn't mind these two hormones. So one of the things, when we look at the difference between men and women hormonally, men are driven by testosterone. Testosterone, not only, we tend to think of testosterone as giving us libido, but testosterone is motivation and it is drive. Men are getting testosterone every 15 minutes. So their motivation and drive is gonna be, uh, to, and especially the motivation to go work out, is typically gonna be a little stronger and it's gonna be, their, their hormones are built to make them move. As women, we are hormonally driven a lot by estrogen and progesterone. And estrogen, if estrogen could talk to you, she would say, yes, please, more fasting, more keto, work out like a queen. That's what estrogen would say to you. But on the flip side of that is progesterone. And if progesterone could talk to you, she would say, chill out. No, it's not so much cardio. Don't do as many um, uh, fasts. Don't go keto. I actually need blood sugar to be a little bit higher. And so as we go to lose weight, we have to take into consideration both estrogen and progesterone. If you are a CrossFit bunny and you love working out all the time and pushing yourself, if you push yourself during the week before your period and you're doing too much CrossFit, you actually might be causing yourself to hold on to weight because you put your body into a crisis, you bring glucose down too much and the body freaks out and it stops burning fat. Whereas if you take that same workout and you put it when estrogen is coming in, you are gonna see that you can drop weight very quickly. So men and women lose weight differently, not only in how we shed it from our bodies, but we also lose it differently in how we need to look at these hormones. Men, you don't need to think about your hormones. Testosterone is serving you very well. You don't have a lot of progesterone to think about. Yes, you have some estrogen, but not as much progesterone. So women, this is what we've got to look at. And I'm going to start with women that are cycling, and then we'll talk about the postmenopausal woman. So your estrogen, for just simplicity's sake, understand that estrogen's coming in somewhere between day one and day 15 of your menstrual cycle. What we know about estrogen that we love is that when we are in that first part of our cycle, we, we're really good at multitasking. We have great mental clarity. We love to connect with other people, get some good oxytocin. We have more energy. Our hair tends to be a little more full and our skin a little more smooth and glowing. Estrogen is the hero of the day for these types of symptoms. So they will come in from day one through day 15. Now, if you want more than that, more of this, these wonderful qualities, then what you're gonna wanna do is go into some longer fasts. This is Fast Training Week. We are practicing the principles of fast like a girl. So we're just doing intermittent fasting right now, um, 13 to 15 hours. But no going forward, if you love a 24-hour fast, you love a 48, you wanna do a, a three-day water fast, 
you want to do it when estrogen is coming in. So you want to do it somewhere between day one through day 15. Okay. The other thing I always tell patients is that when estrogen is coming in in those beginning days, we want to focus on more autophagy because hypothalamus pituitary gland really resonates well with autophagy as do our ovaries. So autophagy, even though we're doing intermittent fasting this, this month, autophagy typically kicks in with fasting around 17 hours. Next month, I'll go into that a little bit more. And then during this time, when we want to get more estrogen, we want to keep glucose low and we want to keep insulin low. So estrogen, if she could talk to you, that is what she would say. Now, progesterone, I think of, I have this really fun line in the book that the editor and I geeked out on, which is estrogen and progesterone are pretty much come from the same family. They are sisters, but just like many sisters in many families, they have vastly different personalities. So we can't just lump all these sex hormones into one container for women. We have to look at their characteristics and treat them differently. So with progesterone, what we know, you ready for this? We know that when progesterone comes in, we crave more carbs. Yeah, a week before our period, how many put it in the comments if that's you? We have more fatigued. We feel more inner. We don't want to socialize as much. We might be a little more absent-minded. Hello, if you're, if you're living with a woman who's the week before her period and she's a little absent-minded, give her some grace. It could be that it's just progesterone coming in. We also know that progesterone can make us sad, can make us a little moody, maybe even affect our overall mental clarity. Now, if progesterone could talk to you, she would say, hey, hey, kill the keto, no keto, I need more glucose, I don't want ketones, I want glucose to be able to shine. So the week before your period, this is not the time to be doing keto. Second thing is she would say, hey, if you can fast 13 hours, great, go ahead and do that, but don't push your fast. In fact, if you don't wanna fast at all, totally fine when progesterone's trying to make her, uh, her appearance. And then the third thing that she would say to you is, let's just not push the work workouts. Let's just have a little more recovery, maybe some walks, maybe some hikes, maybe some yoga. That is going to allow progesterone to shine. So in a month period, when we look at this, we go, okay, more fasting day one through day 15, less fasting day 19 until you bleed. That is just general good fasting uh, uh, strategy for you to know. Now, menopausal women, I want to address you for a moment. You obviously don't have a cycle that you're gonna time this to, but you still have these two different hormones that we need to tend to. I've done a lot of videos on this. In Fast Like a Girl, I got a 30-day fasting reset for every woman on the planet. And you that those of you that don't have a cycle, whether it's because of birth control or you're postmenopausal, this 30-day reset is going to be the answer to so many things because I take you through going in and out of different re, uh, fasts so that you can make sure that you get plenty of estrogen and you get plenty of progesterone. Until that time period, what I want you to know is that a great menopausal strategy is what I call a 5-1-1. Five days a week of intermittent fasting, one day a week you push your fast closer to 24 hours so you can get more estrogen and help her really shine, and then one day a week, no fasting so we can mind progesterone. So that's a little tip until we get to the book. So when we go to lose weight, we go in hard, with more of the restriction, the harder workouts when estrogen is making her appearance, and then we relax more, we go into a little more of a um, mellow place, we up glucose when progesterone is coming in. Now the last thing I'm gonna tell you on this, because I know a lot of you are gonna ask this is, well, if I, if I eat carbs the week before my period, aren't I gonna gain weight? So it's really important that you're doing nature's carbs, and it's really important that when you start to do more carbs the week before your period, that the other weeks when we're trying to get estrogen, that you're really going into low keto, lower down the, the glucose so you get more ketones and you're doing longer fasts.
So as long as you're doing that there, then the bringing up of carbs the week before your cycle is not going to hurt you. I promise. I've seen it happen for thousands of women that this is the strategy on how you can lose weight and mind your hormones at the same time. Doesn't matter what age you are. So there you go. That's the difference between men and women when it approaches weight loss. Men, you can just go to town fast, do whatever you want. You'll drop weight. Women, we have to think about these two hormones. And as always, I hope this helps. And my book, Fast Like a Girl, it is out for pre-order. If you want to know how to pre-order it, just put Fast Like a Girl in your comments. My team will send you a link. And we do have a companion guide for all this. So if you put companion guide in the comments, my team will send you that as well. As always, you're the miracle. You're the healing power. Not the diet, not the fast, not the supplement, not the medication. You are the one that's doing it. So believe in yourself because it's miraculous what can happen when you fast like a girl.